Hi everyone. Um, so I'm going to give you a lecture on uh, National Heritage Act. Okay, so I have divided uh, the lecture into three parts. Huh? If you look at your course book, okay, some of you may have your course book, some of you may not have your course book. I have divided into three parts. Okay, so uh, this part, part one, is on the introduction huh, to heritage conservation or heritage building conservation. It is an introduction to, um, to, to what you call it, to conservation in general, okay? not just in the context of Malaysia. So, in the second part, we are going to bring the lecture to the Malaysian context, huh, whereby we are going to discuss um, the main act, which is the National Heritage Act 2005 or Act 645, and also together with the guidelines huh, in, at state levels. Huh? To be used in the heritage conservation in Malaysia. And the third part will be um, some case studies uh, on the application of our um, heritage conservation law uh, in Malaysia. So this slide is going, uh, this uh, lecture is, is going to just contain about 20 slides, if I'm not mistaken. So at the end of this lecture, you'll be able to define built heritage and also uh, explain the importance of heritage building conservations. Like, like I said before, this lecture is just the foundation, or it's just an introduction um, generically uh, on the heritage uh, building conservation. So not just uh, restricted to Malaysia. What is heritage? So heritage is our legacy from the past. What we live with today and what we pass on to future generations. So isn't this quite similar to the definition of sustainable development, uh, which is um, development now uh, in the uh, in the current um, time uh, that can be passed on to to the future generations without um, uh, what do you call it without um, um, excluding excluding them uh, from what we enjoy uh, in this um, in this present time. So it's similar to the definition of sustainable development, whereby we want to retain, we want to maintain, uh, we, we want to preserve uh, the heritage. Um, uh, from our time uh, to be passed on to the uh, next generations. Okay, so it's legacy from the past that uh, what we live with today and what we pass on to future generations. So it's something that we aim to be sustainable. Okay, um, the meaning of built heritage. We can. Uh, divide built heritage into two types or heritage itself into two uh, categories. One is tangible heritage. The next one is intangible heritage. So what do we mean by tangible heritage? Tangible is something that we can touch, something that is expressed, something that is manifest, something yang boleh dipegang, okay? something that is real, uh, real maksudnya actual lah, boleh pegang. Listen to. So, uh, tangible heritage would include um, historic and cultural buildings such as shop houses, mosques, churches, temples, admin buildings, etc. Uh, also known as built heritage. Intangible heritage, on the other hand, okay, includes local culture and traditions. Uh, so, just uh, intangible heritage is something that we cannot touch. Uh, you can see, you cannot touch. It's intangible. So uh, can include culture, traditions. So are those two things separate? Are those two things distinct? No. Uh, there is a link uh, uh, between intangible heritage and also tangible heritage. The link is to be meaningful, tangible heritage needs living culture. Uh, that is the intangible heritage. And intangible heritage needs to be placed within the context of tangible heritage for both to be meaningful. So the linkage between tangible and intangible heritage is uh, both gives meaning to each other. Huh? Tangible heritage give, gives meaning to intangible heritage and um, at the same time, we need intangible heritage huh, to give meaning to the places, huh, to the built heritage just now. Yeah? For both to be meaningful. So the, the, the linkage is mean, meaning, meaning, memberi makna. Huh? Tanpa uh, either one, okay? The, the, the apa, heritage just now, the tangible without intangible akan menjadi meaningless. Ada makna. It's just a place without context, without meaning, without um, apa nama tu, um, 
without what you call it, culture, uh, without traditions uh, that can be linked to the place. So it becomes empty, uh, meaningless. Tak ada makna. So maknanya, so that means that the both um, tangible and intangible heritage needs each other. Uh, they need each other for them to be meaningful. Uh, cannot stand alone. Okay, if, they, if you have one without the other, uh, that one will be meaningless. Dia akan menjadi kosong, huh? meaningless. So, um, this is um, normally what um, architects, huh? normally or urban planners are what they think of when they are um, faced with um, uh, with heritage, with cultural heritage huh? uh, of the built environment uh, di kawasan mereka. Okay? So it says there, the city, our, uh, our open classroom, before we design, we must observe and absorb the urban landscape. Uh, mesti, um, um, apa nama tu? mesti uh, observe, mesti mengamati okay, the whole picture, the big picture, uh, the whole thing. And not just uh, things in isolation, uh, not just looking at the tangible heritage, for instance, the physical form. It must be looked together with the intangible heritage. Uh, contohnya performance, uh, ritual. So, the the picture on the left hand side, kan? Uh, what do you call it? Praying punya altar. altar. The altar itself, uh, without an act of prayer, will become just a thing. Kan? Tak ada makna. It's just there. But if you combine the altar, together with the acts of worship just now, dia menjadi satu yang lebih makna. Now we know the reason for the prayer altar to be there. We put there. Sebab nanti ada orang sembahyang, kan? Ada orang nak buat ritual di situ. So, both will give the meaning. So, tanpa altar, tak boleh nak buat ritual tersebut. But with, and also, with the, with the altar, without the person doing the ritual, Tak ada maknanya, ha? dia punya tempat semayang tu. Ha? So, it means that mesti ada linkage, mesti ada, the, the both of them must uh, exist together ha? to give meaning to each other. Okay? Sub-tangible meaning. Dia bagi senses, dia bagi meaning ha? kepada uh, the other type of um, heritage. So, examples of heritage, more examples for tangible heritage, we have heritage sites, eh? yang, boleh yang boleh pegang, yang boleh nampak. Heritage site, natural areas and formation such as mountain, beach, trees, river, objects, eh? monuments, buildings, musical instruments, jewellery, eh? itu semua tangible heritage. Uh, intangible heritage, we have music. Tak boleh pegang kan? Boleh dengar. Ada sense. Ha, tapi, tapi tak boleh dipegang music. Language can speak. Ha, it, it's spoken but you cannot touch language. Songs, folk song, dance, theater show, martial art, etc. So, um, there is one other example that is not put here. What about humans? Ha, what about orang-orang, ha, humans ha, yang ada uh, mempunyai this um, heritage or, or skills, ha, this this uh, knowledge, uh, this this heritage knowledge. The mouth, where, where do you put the uh, people uh, under the categories? Is it tangible heritage or intangible heritage? Because uh, people or persons can be declared as uh, heritage, uh, negara, uh, apa nama tu? World, uh, sorry, a national heritage. Uh, so where do you put it? Is it under tangible or intangible heritage? Uh, examples of built heritage, so we are now talking at a global le level, eh? the, the um, uh, significance is at a universal punya, level rather than local level. Uh, you can appreciate the heritage values of these buildings regardless of whether you are a local person or not. For instance, you go to Colosseum, Pantheon, Tower of London, Sagrada Familia, so all these places are not located in Malaysia, uh, supposedly. Uh, we don't have this, this um, appreciation nah, uh, if you're not local, but but these buildings, uh, this built heritage, somehow it, um, apa nama, it goes beyond the um, national boundary. Eh? Even though you're not local, if you go there, you feel this sense. Eh? Ada rasa uh, this awe, sense of awe, sense of, um, apa nama tu, you rasa amazed eh? with the, maybe architecture, with the aesthetics, kecantikannya. Eh? With the what else? With with the uh, maybe juga um, cari bina idea from the scientific point of view, okay, architectural point of view, okay. 
Next one is, uh, so we, we come to Malaysia, we bring back the, the discussion to Malaysia. Just now was at the local, uh, at the international level, right? So heritage buildings, huh? um, buildings of historic, architectural, technological, artistic, and or cultural significance. So the, uh, the point that I want to make is, heritage buildings is more than the age of the building, eh? than old buildings. Heritage buildings is more than old buildings. Added, um, age is represented by history just now. But there are other things, huh? or there are other significances that can lead to a building to be acknowledged as a heritage building. Eh? For instance, there is a architectural, there is a technological, huh? from the point of view of its artistic, sorry, artistic um, uh, values, uh, artistic uh, significance, cultural significance. Uh, so, heritage buildings is more than just old buildings. Uh, so that is my point. Uh, uh, but then again, we, um, the examples that I gave you, that house, is, uh, that house, that house, and also the rumah limas bungkus. Okay, uh, that house is more the historic value. Uh, that there is a uh, tu. When it was built, it was built in the 17th. 17th century, uh, 17th century during the uh, Dutch colonialization of Malacca. Uh, so, dah lama, bangunan lama uh, di Malacca. So, we appreciate uh, set hoist in terms of its age, uh, in terms of dah, dah lama di situ kan masih ada, 16th century, eh, sorry, 17th century, 16 something, 1605 or something. It's from 1511 until 1645, right? The Dutch uh, colonization, colonialization uh, of uh, the Malaccan Sultanate. So long time ago, uh, we appreciate this um, group of buildings due to its historic value. On the other hand, the Rumah Lima Bungkus, Rumah Limas Bungkus, uh, Rumah Limas Bungkus tu, not um, erected in the 17th century, bukan? It's younger than that, uh, more recent than that. However, this Rumah Limas Bungkus, uh, the Istana Tengkulong in Terengganu, the significance uh, that uh, it has is architectural, cultural. Uh, cultural sebab dia, um, uh, apa nama tu, um, satu seni bina Melayu kan. So it's our traditional um, architecture. At the other, on the other hand, the architectural significance to Rumah Limas Bungkus, Rumah Limas Bungkus, uh, dia tak gunakan paku kan. Dia gunakan, what do you call that? Um, Tang and tongues and grooves. Ah, they use like a Lego. The tongues and grooves. Ah, they don't use paku. So that is a uh, quite an uh, an extraordinary uh, architectural feat, lah. Ah, uh, macam mana dia bina rumah tersebut. And this building can be um, apa nama tu? Can be moved from one side to another side. Yeah, it's not fixed in place. So the 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 kind of um foundation and that can be found in most uh, Malay traditional buildings and masih, uh, apa nama tu? Uh, masih preserved until uh, uh, until today. So that's why it's, it has such um, high significance uh, in terms of architectural and cultural significance. So uh, my point just now, uh, in terms of building significance, not all old buildings are heritage buildings. New buildings may also be considered as heritage buildings. So it depends on the significance of the buildings. Kepentingan, uh, kepentingan bangunan. So it main, uh, the, the kepentingan may not just be in terms of its age. Uh, bukan bangunan lama saja yang jadi uh, bangunan warisan. So heritage buildings are not only buildings of special importance such as castles, palaces and churches but also groups of buildings in the historic urban areas because these buildings provide context to the local heritage. So, kata di sini, bangunan-bangunan heritage tu may not be uh, important buildings such as istana, iskandar, bukan istana, uh, bukan uh, tempat worship, uh, not just, um, apa nama lagi, um, uh, uh, tempat orang bangsawan, uh, bukan. But, because of the buildings, they memberikan satu identity, satu konteks right, kepada to the local heritage. So these buildings such as um, the start hoist just now, kind of group of buildings at the tengah-tengah um, Melaka, also kind of group of buildings. Uh, dari segi kepentingannya bukan sebab dia bangunan um, yang penting, bukan raja duduk di situ kan. Uh, it's not even 
um, apa nama tu um, um, gov- uh, the, the offices of government agencies uh, yang ada situ sekarang cuma um, museums, okay? museum Babanyonya, museum what else di situ, museum Belaka if I'm not mistaken at Set Hoys, huh? so it's not just it's not the usage but it's the uh, identity that it provides to the local punya um, uh, heritage at local level. Now, uh, building types uh, that can be considered as bit heritage, like I said just now, not just um, palaces or uh, churches or masjid. Kebukan saja banyak uh, dia punya. Uh, there's a lot. There's a whole list of um, building types that can be considered the built heritage. For instance, shop houses. Kadang-kadang shop houses tu um, do not have um, apa nama historic. Uh, sorry, not historic. Um, cultural significance pun. Uh, uh, it's just um, apa nama tu? Uh, sometimes uh, the shop houses are not even that pretty, but they have this architectural punya um, architectural punya identity. For instance, kan? Um, they ada certain uh, what do you call it? Certain um, eras, as uh, the era 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 tertentu for the for the shop houses. For instance, the Art Deco. Apa lagi dia ada um, Art Deco? Then dia ada the the, the uh, but that there's quite a few types uh, of shop houses. So these buildings, uh, because they represent certain architectural style, uh, they may be considered uh, heritage. Townhouses, mosques, uh, churches, Chinese temples, Hindu temples, buildings of administration, okay? buildings of commerce, godowns and offices, gudang-gudang, uh, dan pejabat-pejabat, residential blocks pun boleh jadi um, built. Uh, sorry, the built heritage, uh, warisan, um, warisan tampak atau warisan um, b- uh, bina. Now, what about heritage conservation? Uh, if we say that heritage uh, uh, or the built heritage has um, its significance, then perlu kita retain, perlu kita pass on from the current generation to the next generation. There needs to be a uh, uh, an activity that can um, that can uh, ensure that the passing on will take place. Kan? Uh, we don't want to pass on buildings that have run down. Contohnya tak boleh digunakan lagi. Kan? So we want to ensure that the built heritage that are here uh, that is here today, uh, when we pass on to the next generation, it is in a in a fair um, uh, apa nama? fair condition. Kan? Fair condition. So how do you ensure that? It is ensured through heritage conservation, okay? Conservation and and apa nama tu? An activity known as or a set of activities known as conservation, huh? Penyenggaraan, penyenggaraan um, warisan, okay? Most major cities in Malaysia contains pockets of heritage properties established before or during colonial times. Normally, these properties are located at city center. Uh, uh, that is the CBD, the central business district with high land values. Uh, CBDs normally possess very high land values uh, because of the fact that it's the most established area uh, in the city center. Uh, back to what you learned before, the land rent theory. Right? Land, land rent theory, uh, is reflected by the uses, by the use uh, that it can provide. Uh, so the higher the uh, the yield that you can get from the land, uh, the returns that you can get from the land, the higher the price you have to pay uh, for uh, to bid for the land. Can so these properties are located at city center uh, CBD, and development pressure in the CBD threatens the conservation of these properties. Threatens in what sense? Threatens in the sense that this, um, there are developers who come in who bid for the sites and who wants to rebuild on the sites. Uh, the old buildings they want to demolish and then build new, taller buildings uh, on the sites or more high density new buildings uh, on the um, on the older on the old buildings uh, on the heritage buildings. Okay, so in Singapore and Mumbai. The Leisure Fair approach in, uh, in urban rehabilitation and revitalization has destroyed tangible heritage and with it the living culture associated with the historic property. So um, in Singapore, uh, Singapore and most of Southeast Asia, our CBDs um, uh, are, what do you call it, are identified or uh, can, can be apa nama tu? Uh, the, the main uh, identity of our older towns. Right? Uh, 
pre-wash up houses. Same juga, same in Singapore as well. Huh? In the CBD, huh? uh, one time in Singapore, they had a lot of pre-wash up houses. And those pre-wash up houses, okay, were, uh, were ripe for redevelopment huh? because of the fact that the land price is so high, was so high at those um, locations. Huh? So developers came in, uh, bought the sites and demolished the old pre-wash up houses and rebuilt with high buildings, huh? high office or um, other commercial uh, buildings huh? to get uh, returns, to get uh, to better returns huh? on the land. Highest and best use, right? Okay. So if there's no uh, restriction on um, on the demolition of the um, of the existing um, heritage buildings on the site, of course, highest and best use will uh, will uh, result in the developers trying to build as high as possible, then right? according to the plot ratio, according to what is allowed uh, under zoning um, laws in the area. So itulah tanpa any conservation law, tanpa any uh, apa nama tu um, uh, um, controls uh, by by any conservation departments. Uh, maknanya they can freely right, um, redevelop the area okay, according to the lesser fair. Lesser fair to free market, uh, free market punya principles, which is of course what we learned before highest and best use on the site kan so whatever is legally permissible technically possible and financially viable on the site okay let's uh, so uh, in the case of singapore at right, one time they realized that they 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 meaning the government lah, the local community and also the authorities they realized that they were losing um apa nama tu a part of their identity part of their local culture by allowing the uh, pre wash up houses to be demolished uh, to be replaced with new buildings so that's, so that's why uh, the government um, apa nama tu, the authorities at one time okay ura from the second urban, Re urban redevelopment authority of singapore they realized that they had to stop they put a, they had to put a stop uh, to the loss of um, heritage in um, in the city center or in the city area. Huh? So what they did was they managed to save a few rows of shop houses. If you go to Orchard Road, for instance, now you can find huh, they have um, managed to turn around. They have managed to conserve the older buildings and they have managed to uh, to to do some adaptive reuse huh, of the older pre wash up houses and to and um, to, to make it um apa nama tu to make it uh, um, uh, economically viable okay uh, they did some adaptive reuse so now it's being used as maybe what how is it now some boutique shops uh, uh, some restaurants there and it's a uh, it's a tourist attraction as well uh, the older parts of sorry the older buildings uh, in uh, singapore that they have managed to conserve so what does heritage conservation include and what is the act of heritage what is the definition of heritage conservation heritage conservation is the big umbrella it's a big umbrella under it there are a few activities eh, that can that can be considered or that are considered uh, conservation activities okay so heritage conservation includes acts of rehabilitation, preservation, renovation, restoration, and revitalization. Okay, so rehabilitation, preservation, renovation, restoration, revitalization are all actions or all acts huh, that uh, contribute to heritage conservation. Rehabilitation maknanya kita kita rehab balik bangunan tu kita betul balik ya, repair balik we have kan bangunan tu menjadi some, uh, from uh, apa from a, a, a building that has fallen into disrepair or, or you know that has been run down uh, kita rehab kan balik kita repair kan balik uh, to apa nama to to be of some economic use sekarang Pres preservation 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 is um, more on the preserve kita repair kan bangunan tu uh, kita what about kita try to um, kekalkan pengekalan bangunan kita kekalkan keadaan tu preservation renovation we renovate huh? maybe to um, to what renovate to um, reflect huh, the current usage without patching huh, the main 
uh, identity of the building. Maybe don't replace all the original punya materials of the building, huh? but just a little bit. Huh? Uh, maybe to 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 apa, install some modern um, apa nama tu modern uh, requirements such as um, cabling for uh, the internet and things like that renovation. Or maybe do some uh, kind of um, uh, of what they call sympathetic punya extensions to building kan, to the building. Boleh juga ha, renovation. Do not touch the facade of the building. Maybe can add an extension at the back of the building. Restoration. Kita restore balik mana yang uh, the apa, um, restoration maybe has been touched um, touched up before uh, wrongly. Gunakan materials yang the wrong materials ha, to apa to to preserve the building. Ha take that off again and then use some materials that are quite similar to the original uh, building materials huh? restoration revitalization is more on um, is more on what you call it in uh, more on attracting people back huh, to the area huh? to get the intangible punya heritage there huh? to get the people to live in that area revitalization maybe by um, the government giving grants huh? kepada apa nama tu kepada owners of the building or to give technical advice huh, to the owners of the building on how to um, better attract people to come to their places revitalization of that area there's a lot of examples of this huh, revitalization for instance in um, KL itself kan KL itself um, um, apa nama tu jalan Hang Kasturi ke Hang Kasturi and also the um, what do you call it, the Pasar Seni, uh, the central market, uh, revitalized the area because before, at one time, okay, um, the Pasar Seni was so dirty, uh, was so uh, to crime infested that people don't go to that area. Uh, but the government through the, uh, to turning the Pasar, the central market to Pasar Seni, to an arts market, okay, managed to um, bring some life uh, to the old building, to, the, to, to that particular area. Conservation aims for authenticity and sustainability of heritage. So two things. One is they try to preserve the original character, the original design maybe huh, of the building, huh, of the old building, of the original building. Then sustainability. Huh? Sustainability means uh, try to, um, to, to, to ensure that the uh, maybe the um, intangible heritage uh, is um, is contained in the building and uh, not just uh, focus on the tangible side but also on the intangible meaning um, there are people living or working within the buildings uh, to keep the buildings alive uh, not just uh, focusing on pres preserving the, uh, the, the the physical aspect of the building itself now, what are the importance? What's the importance of heritage building conservation? Why do we do it? What's the motivation uh, for the, especially for the government to, and, and uh, not the market, the NGOs, the non-government organizations uh, uh, in, um, in, what call, in promoting heritage building conservation, penyenggaraan bangunan warisan. Why do you need it? Why do you need to do it? One, heritage as, as a public good. The public good means uh, the the market will not be uh, will not be interested to maintain or provide to provide this kind of goods and uh, public goods because maybe the returns from the goods or profit from the goods are not high uh, not um, what the market uh, needs uh, for them to uh, operate but they take the profit so why must the market provide these kind of goods so that's why the government has to step in. Uh, and um, ensure that heritage is preserved, is conserved huh, for the uh, current generation and, and to be uh, passed on to the next generation. So that's, that's about uh, when heritage is being, uh, uh, is being considered public goods. As a public good, the government has to ensure their sustainability. That there's no choice, the responsibility belongs to the government to provide public goods. Public means the the people as a whole will enjoy huh, the uh, goods, but there's no profit from the good. Maybe profit here um, refers to monetary profits. Tak ada di situ, huh, monetary profits. But there's a sense of enjoyment 
of heritage. There's a sense of identity uh, of, uh, of the heritage buildings, uh, uh, which cannot be represented by money, uh, but can be represent, uh, represented by well-being, the well-being of the people. Uh, when you have a, what call, a sense of place, a sense of belonging uh, to that particular area, because you are familiar with the old buildings, with the, uh, with the heritage buildings, uh, this will give you a sense of security. You can tell you that selamat berada situ because there's always something that you can uh, look on as being permanent, kan? So maknanya dia boleh bagi you rasa selamat. It can give you, it can give you also the feeling of um, wellness, rasa well-being to protect it huh? by having um, apa nama tu uh, buildings that we are uh, familiar with sense of place, sense of belonging uh, for the people. The second one is uh, because the heritage building conservation is part of sustainable development. Okay, you can see here, although current generation may prefer new development, future generation may prefer heritage more. So who are we to deny the future generations okay, their chance of enjoying uh, the heritage buildings, the old buildings? For instance, the current generation has pulled down the Pudu Jail. Uh, because we say, you know, the area is right for redevelopment. Puduja has nothing to offer, kan? Old buildings, kawasan yang, dulu, uh, yang apa, uh, tak ada, tak glamour. It's not glamorous, right? It's just a jail. It's just a place where you detain, um, apa nama tu? Uh, people. Uh, people who um, who did wrongs against the society. So, dia kata mana? Why should we retain? Now, the current generation says, why should we retain a jail, kan? Whereby the uh, when the land can be used for uh, more profitable uh, developments, there. That's what we said now. That's what the current generation now, 50 years, 100 years from now, uh, the the uh, the people who live at that time may lament, may rasa alamak. Kenapa? Why did the older generations tear down? Tor, uh, why did they tear down Puruje? Why why did they tear down to the uh, Stadium Mordeka? Uh, those places have. Um, um, historic significance uh, that maybe they want to um, they want to experience. They want to go to Puduja. They want to go to Stadium Merdeka, but it cannot uh, because it has been torn down, replaced by new build by a newer building. Okay? So uh, the decisions by the current generation may deprive the current generations from the heritage that they want to enjoy. So because this is. Um, to ensure sustainable development, uh, to pass on whatever um, the current generations are enjoying to the new, uh, to the next generations. The third one, environmental consideration, okay, whereby embodied energy exists in heritage buildings, and more energy, it's more energy efficient to preserve building rather than constructing a new one. Okay. So it says there, you already have buildings. It doesn't matter if they are old. They are uh, these older buildings. They may use technologies that are more energy efficient. For instance, they have what they call that um, uh, KC to the the um, air the natural uh, sorry the passive design for natural air ventilation that now we don't we no longer have huh? because of the fact that we now use air conditioning. Again. So we have to make sure that the building is air air locked. Is it air locked? Uh, yeah lah, air locked lah. Tak boleh, um, Udara luar tak boleh masuk, but the, the current design of the building, okay, uh, although good for air conditioning, it means that there's no air circulation, right? there's no good air ventilation or circulation within the building. Uh, this can contribute to the sick building syndrome, then right? it's not good for the health of the um, of the occupants huh? of the use building users. Okay, so the older buildings may use technologies. Huh? Uh, building technologies that are um, good for the well-being or the health uh, of the uh, building users. Huh? So uh, maybe instead of tearing down the old buildings, just re just um, what do you call it? just uh, rehabilitate, uh, apa, masukkan um, new features uh, that can help you want to um, ensure that um, the the air, that, that the cool air doesn't escape. Can you can instead of tear down the whole building, just put in um, new what they call it, new windows uh, to replace the the slits too, the the what the uh, fixed um, loofs uh, uh, that can allow airflow to take that replace with um, fixed panels, for instance. Uh, 
And um, um, in, during the construction of the old building, a lot of energy has been used uh, for the construction. Energy meaning the labor, uh, the labor, the what else, the uh, the labor time, uh, all this, the energy meaning, uh, yeah, labor uh, basically. Uh, so it has been used to, to, to build the building. If you tear it down and rebuild a new building, one, you are using energy to tear down the building, to demolish the building. Two, you are using energy to build a new building. Uh, so that's uh, three times you use energy instead of just one, right? Uh, so the old building uses energy to be built, then used energy uses energy to be demolished, Use, and then you use another set of energy to build new building uh, rather than just leaving the old building to stand and just you know renovate, rehabilitate and do things, the other things like adaptive reuse to the old building. So from the point of view of environmental consideration, okay, uh, building conservation is more energy efficient. Uh, so you, uh, the, the similar concept is, is you recycle the building, the old building, recycle that to, ref, to, to be used in a new way uh, by rehabilitating, rehabilitating, by renovating, uh, by preserving rather than tear down, rebuild. Smart growth, urban redevelopment which is sustainable and environmentally friendly it has to do with the environmental consideration just now. So smart growth is you conserve the energy or you you, you um, uh, prevent uh, the energy from uh, being used uh, three times um, more than just uh, conserving the old building, uh, which is sustainable and environmentally friendly. Uh, next is prevents urban decay, whereby listed heritage building must be maintained under the law, uh, thus keeping the building and neighborhood safe. So, some old buildings, uh, um, the, the motivation of the owners to maintain the buildings in good, uh, in good conditions uh, is quite low uh, because uh, of the fact that sometimes the rental can be low uh, for all the buildings. But if uh, a building has been listed as a heritage building, there is an obligation on the owner to keep the, the building in, repair, in good repairs or in good um, conditions. Huh? So a building, an older building which has been, um, which has been, has not been maintained well, huh? can be, can um, eventually lead to the building being dilapidated. Maknanya dia jadi usang. Bangunan tu jadi dilapidated. Dilapidated building or a, a row of dilapidated dilapidated buildings uh, in the case of shop houses. Kalau katakan satu shop, shop house, one, one shop house is not being uh, maintained, okay, it could be okay. But say one shop house has not been uh, maintained. Uh, so the next door owner, uh, the, the next, uh, the neighboring uh, unit, okay, also doesn't man, uh, does not manage to attract um, uh, renters uh, because of the fact that the next door unit is, uh, is so uh, is in a bad condition, and this will uh, infect the next, um, the next, open number two, the next door neighbor. It will infect also the next door neighbor. Say after that, a whole row of uh, a pre wash shop house couldn't get um, renters uh, because of the fact that uh, number two, people don't want to live in a in a in a rundown punya uh, neighborhood, kan? Huh? So it will lead to urban decay. Uh, urban decay, as we said, can be, can be manifest in terms of physical manifestation, which is uh, rundown buildings or dilapidated buildings. At the same time, these old buildings or these um, abandoned buildings may also lead to crime rates, uh, high crime rates in the area. Uh, it may also lead to what else? Um, uh, crime, uh, the, the, the vermins, apa nama tu? Penyakit, penyakit vectors, vector carrying diseases, disease carrying vectors. Okay, so in that area. Okay, so if there's a law that says the owner must maintain his historic building, then it can prevent the urban decay from happening. Economic generator. Now, heritage building conservation has been proven 
uh, has been proven as a uh, as a what do you call it, as a tourist dollar punya uh, attractor. So it has happened in Singapore, in Malacca, in Georgetown, in many many cities around the world, right? Uh, whereby heritage tourism uh, through designations of the sites as especially as UNESCO's World Heritage Site you know, that can attract global tourists to come to the place and enjoy the heritage that the place can offer uh, economic generators tourist dollars lah, uh, in tourist dollars we say economic generator related tourist attraction now for example uh, can it be tourist attraction can once uh, there's a concerted effort huh, in heritage conservation, not just for one building, but for the whole area. Then the whole area, uh, the whole city or part of the city can be marketed. Uh, they boleh jadi marketed. They boleh contribute to city marketing. So the other city branding this two, the other satu brand. Huh? World Heritage Site Malacca and uh, Georgetown, for instance. So there's a brand there. Uh, there's a brand. There's a satu chop lah huh, sebagai uh, something that UNESCO has. Um, has approved uh, as having significant cultural uh, value. Uh. So in Penang, they have what is called Penang Heritage Trail, uh, uh, whereby um, apa, a proper, punya, a proper punya, um, trail uh, has been drawn uh, from uh, uh, identifying the heritage buildings uh, along the route uh, for instance number satu number dua and then you go on two three four five so all these things uh, and also the pin at the melaka melaka heritage trail same thing uh, whereby they they uh, market uh, they market kind the area okay uh, um, by ident by identifying the built heritage the, the heritage buildings uh, and then you know people when they walk or when they go through the uh, areas. Huh? What they do is they don't just appreciate the uh, heritage uh, buildings, but also maybe they feel hungry, can so they stop. So that can promote the local uh, economy, huh? the eateries, also the souvenir shops. Huh? What else? Um, maybe they don't. They feel lazy to walk, so they can take the tri shops, can huh? so for the local tri shop, punya, um, punya apa nama tu? Uh, uh, business good for them. Okay. Uh, besides that, they have the tour bus can hop on, hop off can. So you know, a lot of uh, e economic activities can be generated huh, from the successful branding of the cities into heritage punya, um, heritage punya areas. Especially, like I said, if the um, if the heritage uh, acknowledgement comes from a world body such as UNESCO. So conservation of built heritage in Malaysia. In Malaysia, there are several challenges in built heritage conservation. Number one is conflict with competing users. Uh, like um, examples uh, in the CBDs, um, the competing users such as the residential users, uh, such as the commercial users, uh, are all competing for prime uh, land uh, in the city center. Yes, some of the older buildings may be of lower uh, Upper density ataupun lower plot ratio than what is allowed kan. So first, sometimes okay, the developers come in and um, they have their eye huh, on the sites. Huh? So you have this, um, apa, this threat that hangs on the heritage sites huh, all the time. So it happens um, not only in Malaysia actually, all over the world. Okay? Conflict with competing users. The second one is effects of age and time on the building fabric. Okay. Uh, the intention may be there to preserve, to conserve the uh, the uh, the what you call the the heritage buildings. But as time passes on, okay, as the building ages, okay, um, you have things like uh, the building material being uh, 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 being deteriorated. Huh? Uh, for instance, you have tiles, yang uh, pecah, that that breaks due to heat, uh, heat, and also cooling. Heat, cooling, heat, cooling of the sun, kan? Of the, uh, of the daily temperature uh, changes. Okay, natural, kan? Not caused by by people, maybe, and also um, not just um, the the natural causes, but also sometimes um, 
um, apa nama tu old buildings or heritage buildings in Malacca for instance uh, they are the threat comes from uh, vibration from the vehicles uh, from the tourist buses that comes in the tourist buses that come in the area uh, or even uh, normal vehicles uh, apa nama tu tying the road to go to work or whatever uh, so these vibrations from the vehicles can cause the the structure of the old buildings to be threatened uh, ada deterioration di situ also, uh, sometimes um, uh, natural pests such as you know termites. Termites they come, uh, termites come and uh, eat at the um, timber. What do you call it? Timber columns of the buildings. Uh, that's why sometimes they had to uh, resort to non-traditional punya method of protecting the timber, such as putting uh, putting um, copper copper punya uh, base uh, at the bottom of the columns. It's not part of the original building but has to be done to prevent uh, the termites from eating away uh, at the timber. Uh, improper renovation or rehabilitation efforts like I said before sometimes the, the effects of age and, and time of the building fabric they, it may cause the buildings to to be um, to be uh, to, to, to require some repairs uh, but okay uh, maybe okay not just problems of getting the original building materials but also getting the workmanship uh, the what do you call it, the people who have the right skills uh, um, to repair the buildings or to maintain the buildings uh. Uh, for instance in Malacca what they did was okay they had this problem with the local uh, name, local tukang local workmen workmanship is not there because um, uh, but exposure is more on the modern building techniques or construction techniques. So what they did in Malacca was they used to import uh, work, uh, workmen uh, ataupun uh, repairmen from Vietnam for instance because Vietnam has a lot of old buildings and these people they really hone down their, their they really hone their skills and they really have the required skills uh, in repairing old buildings they know the techniques from the old times uh. so something uh, some some of the techniques we have lost here in Malaysia uh, because we are more focused on training our uh, workmen or our builders uh, in the newer techniques kind of. so we lost some of the older techniques in repairing the old buildings so we had to import uh, the people not just from Vietnam but sometimes from Indonesia as well okay so um, it, um, in some cases whereby they cannot find the the workmen the the, 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 the workmen with the skills or they don't have enough money uh, to import the from outside sometimes they conduct their own repairs or maintenance repairs and maintenance uh, which may uh, not which may not reflect the original construction or original building materials of the building uh, so other improper renovation or rehabilitation efforts to situ. okay right. and then we have um, we have lack of maintenance Okay, lack of maintenance and beautification okay, in the old building, uh, in the heritage buildings may be due to uh, lack of funds, for instance, uh, maintenance and uh, beautification, uh, lack of funds uh, or the owner um, refuses to spend money on uh, maintenance and beautification. Maybe there are other pressing, um, to, pressing uh, items that they need to spend their money on. Okay? So uh, when there's lack of funds there, okay, there will be no maintenance and beautification of the buildings okay? and sometimes uh, or most of the times they um, rely on government grants eh? for instance in Malacca uh, last time Malacca not just Malacca Terengganu also Terengganu I know uh, the, what they call the waterfront development right the government what they did was they give grants uh, for the uh, for both Malacca and Kuala Terengganu and maybe I think even in uh, in Kuching as well uh, for the the, the, the older pre war shop houses uh, that face the river okay, because they have the river cruise, right? uh, they have a, or, or they build um, apa nama tu, uh, river front punya, uh, roads, uh, they, they build new roads uh, at the back of the building. So they give grants to the owners to beautify the back of their buildings. So now you if you go to um, to, to Terengganu, Kuala Terengganu, if you go to Malacca, the back side of the buildings uh, before, the rear side, before it's not so attractive. Uh, 
now they have painted, for instance, or they have renovated the back of the buildings. Huh? So um, in Kuala Trungganu, for instance, they have dual frontage shop houses. So one at the front front, the other one at the back, uh, which has, which now is a uh, riverfront punya, uh, punya frontage. That's good, isn't it? And owners' perception as burdensome. Huh? So for some owners, they feel it's a burden uh, for them to undertake. Um, conservation activities. Uh, maybe one, the lack of fun just now, two, because of time. Uh, they don't have time. And also, conservation of heritage buildings need um, care, more care than a modern building. So they may perceive uh, the, the responsibility as burdensome. Now, we come to the international organizations and uh, the role of international organizations. So we have international organizations such as ICOMOS and UNESCO that have supported heritage protection through charters and conventions. So ICOMOS huh, is a very famous um, organization. Huh? It stands for International Charter, for, sorry, International ICOMOS Museums and uh, next, next slide, okay, we will see what ICOMOS stands for. But ICOMOS and UNESCO are two uh, of the more prominent uh, organi international organizations when it comes to uh, conservation of heritage. Okay? So how do they do it? They provide guidelines uh, or they provide um, charters ataupun conventions that, that countries can um, sign to, can be signatories of. Uh, where uh, this, this form some kind of contract, you know, uh, multilateral agreement between uh, nations, uh, between countries that they agree to the principles of, of conservation in the uh, charters ataupun conventions uh, uh, proposed by ACOMOS and UNESCO. So among such charters and conventions are the International Charter for the Conservation and Restoration of Monuments and Sites. That was Venice 1964, a long time ago, right? Then resolutions of the Fifth General Assembly of the International Council on Monuments and Sites, uh, ICOMOS, International Council on Monuments and Sites. So ICOMOS stands for International Council on Monuments and Sites. So monument is the, uh, the, the, the things like statues, uh, things like um, what we call stella, the many stella, uh, statues, uh, um, atong. Uh, Basically, monuments ataupun monument, monument, tubuh negara is a monument, sites, site to tapak, uh, tapak which includes buildings on the sites. Okay? So, uh, ICOMOS uh, in 1978, Moscow, okay, they have resolutions in mana uh, the General Assembly though, uh, of, of the, the countries who went there, the countries who went there, they ratify. Ratify maknanya they sign lah, uh, the uh, resolution. They bersetuju dengan resolusi by the 5th General Assembly of ICOMOS. Bura Charter. So the Bura Charter okay, is a charter, is a guideline. Charter is like a guideline, a um, agreement. No, not agreement, it's a guideline, it's a guide. Huh? Uh, yang mana, okay, Bura is a place. Bura is a mining town in Australia. So the Australia cha uh, chapter of ICOMOS, okay, ICOMOS to international, right? but the Australian chapter, okay, uh, they come, uh, come up. They came up with the Bura Charter. The first one was in 1979. Okay. Then further after that, the Bura Ch Charter was um, upon, was um, uh, upon, amended a few times lah, to reflect uh, to reflect the current the current changes uh, the current social economic changes to um, upon, um, to um, improve uh, the, upon, um, the the provisions uh, inside the charter. So the last time it was. Um, amended was 2013, so it's now known as Bura Charter 2013. Anyway, UNESCO, what does that stand, stand for? UNESCO stands for United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. Huh? So the, the key word there is cultural. Lah. So cultural, culture too, is um, something that is associated with heritage. Okay. So in the 1970s, the UNESCO promoted convention concerning the protection of the world's cultural and natural heritage. So this becomes the basis of UNESCO punya World Heritage Site, huh? whereby the significance that they seek to uh, protect is the cultural and also natural yeah, um, significance of those sites. ICOMOS, uh, so this is ICOMOS, International Council on Monuments and Sites, what is it? 
is an NGO, non-governmental professional organization. Okay, so non-government, but at the same time, who who are the members of the uh, of the organization is professionals. Uh, professionals, yang mana include this one, architects, town planners, demographers, archaeologists, geographers, historians, conservators, anthropologists, scientists, engineers, and heritage administrators. So all these professionals. Uh, the international punya, uh, professionals they came together uh, and they became members of uh, the or they become members of ICOMOS. So these international members they um, apa tu, they are exposed to what ICOMOS punya, uh, principles are and they bring the principles back to their countries. Macam kita pun ada awal dekan tu, uh, awal dekan uh, Professor Yahya uh, uh, is very big on ICOMOS. No? So they represent ICOMOS di Malaysia. Anyway, uh, ICOMOS is closely linked to UNESCO. So if we mention ICOMOS, uh, tak dapat tak kita akan dis, uh, mention juga UNESCO at the same time because most of some of the funding, some of the supports uh, come from UNESCO. Okay. Uh, then what else? Um, ICOMOS. Uh, where do you think their office is? Uh, their office is, if I'm not mistaken, in Paris. Uh, Paris ICOMOS. Sama juga dengan UNESCO. Uh, so it's a it's an arm of UNESCO. Dia ada satu branch, satu agensi yang berkaitan dengan UNESCO. So what does it do? Ah, dia ada conservation projects, ah, conservation projects, research, intercultural exchanges, cooperative activities. So anything if the members are not sure of maybe techniques kan, conservation techniques or when the members want to draft a law ataupun any guidelines and they can go to ICOMOS and then they can ask for help. Ah. Uh, for technical help, uh, assistance from ICOMOS, how to go about doing conservation in their countries, ataupun macam mana nak 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 come up, nak draft uh, apa nama tu um, law uh, regarding conservation in their countries, for instance. So the Bura Charter, what is it? So uh, in 1979, the Bura Charter was produced by ICOMOS Australia. Uh, it's actually the best practice standard for cultural heritage management, pengurusan. Uh, warisan culture culture uh, budaya uh, warisan kebudayaan so warisan dia berkenaan dengan apa kebudayaan we're not talking about um, for instance only architectural punya uh, heritage ataupun bukan saja cakap pasal um, historic punya heritage is culture uh, so we now uh, what is cultural heritage ini kat bawah ni uh, the definition is that now anyway the latest amendment to the bura charter was in 2013 the bura charter provides guidance for the conservation and management of places of of cultural significance cultural so apa maksud cultural cultural significance under the bura charter the bura charter defines cultural significance to mean aesthetic historic scientific social or spiritual value so dia mengandungi ke lima-lima uh, values lima-lima nilai tu ha? aesthetic dari segi kecantikan aesthetic the beauty of the of the place uh, the historic value of the place the scientific value of the place the social value of the place or spiritual value of the place so it can be an overlap of aesthetic plus historic historic plus scientific ataupun it can be on its own ha? satu tempat yang ada aesthetic punya value yang yang ada it must be outstanding universal value jadi mesti dia punya culture tu bukan satu um, satu part one part of the population saja yang uh, yang uh, appreciate but you know the the whole nation uh, even globally so mesti dari uh, apa nama tu uh, culture significance cultural significance can be aesthetic cantikan dia dari segi age dia tu historic dia sejarah dia dari segi scientific uh, scientific maybe the the building uh, material for instance uh, building materials the building design for instance scientific social uh, dari segi uh, masyarakat uh, dia punya values dia punya nilai kepada masyarakat uh, for instance in Malaysia kan uh, apa nama tu rumah piramli uh, maybe not that historical bukan bersejarah sangat bukan bukan uh, rumah Piram, piramli was born 1920 something kan so it, it was not 100 years ago 200 years ago the 17th century no kan so dari segi history a uh, historical value rumah piramli may not have or may not contain historic value but it may has 
it may have social value. Ha, social tu dari segi oh piramli kita satu tokoh uh, kebudayaan di Malaysia kan. So we uh, we we apa nama appreciate ha, the place of birth of a of a, of a cultural icon ha, in our country for instance spiritual uh, the churches the mosques just now uh, the temple uh, really for the past present or future generations uh. Uh, and furthermore bura charta it says place tadi tu uh, apa what is the place yang mengandungi this cultural significance uh, is embodied in the place itself its fabric dalam dalam bangunan itu dalam fabric dalam dia punya Uh, material tu dalam dia punya bricks and stones ah uh, bricks and cement tadi tu uh, dalam dia punya dia punya apa uh, material building material setting ataupun dia punya roof dia punya walls dia punya uh, akan sesuatu dia fabric setting location dia use is use associations ah uh, kaitan dia dengan bangunan lain for instance atau kaitan dia dengan tokoh atau sesuatu tokoh meanings maknanya record related places and related objects so it's not just the building itself but the fabric of the building ada uh, binaan bangunan tu sendiri uh, also location dia di mana kegunaan bangunan the use of the building association the linkages of the building of the place with other uh, places as well meanings maknanya records and all these things so place uh, to the according to the bura charter is more than just the physical containment a container bukan saja tempat tu tapi mungkin juga associated with other buildings and other people and other things as well so why is it important is because in malaysia we adopt the bura charter uh, uh, punya principles sebagai guidance uh, in the in coming up with our own um, apa nama national heritage act and also our guidelines itulah kenapa kita penting nak belajar pasal bura charter principles conservation includes all the processes of looking after a place so as to retain its cultural significance so dia adalah uh, conservation uh, penyelenggaraan tu termasuk semua proses all the processes of looking after a place uh, tujuannya untuk apa to retain untuk me, apa untuk menyimpan tu untuk mengekalkan uh, the cultural significance okay cultural significance again cultural significance ini all these things aesthetic historic scientific social spiritual apa-apa saja uh, daripada the five values tu okay so all the processes all the processes of looking after a place so as to retain its cultural significance which encompasses which encompasses the activities that are aimed at safeguarding of a cultural resource so as to retain its historic value and extend its physical life uh, so deep at the end of the day not just we, we don't want to just retain the cultural significance but also to extend the punya life to untuk bawa dia kepada next generations buildings to be conserved shall be retained restored or preserved eh? not total reconstruction so this is what bura charter is totally against bukan demolish and rebuild ah dia tak percaya kepada tu dia percaya kepada whatever is there you just touch up you just um, apa nama tu repair eh? maintain preserve kan dia ha? retain restore preserve not total reconstruction dia tak percaya kepada demolish buat baru Ha, contoh demolish buat baru contoh kudu je kan ada keadaan lama dia tiba-tiba ada orang kata oh tak apa we can make another a new kudu je we tear down the old building the old kudu je we build a new kudu je we maintain the same de uh, design for instance no that is not what bura charter is all about bura charter is about is all about when you say before kan it's too late now say before they want to conserve puruje huh? maybe go back to the original drawings look at where the puruje has been restored wrongfully huh? take that out buang apa-apa saja yang salah uh, di uh, apa restore uh, sebelumnya maybe dari dari segi additional punya buildings ataupun gunakan penggunaan uh, building materials that are not sympathetic maknanya tak maknanya dia clash huh, dengan the the original building huh? go back to the original drawings huh? and then mana-mana yang pecah betulkan mana-mana yang Uh, apa nama tu dah roboh uh, dirikan balik uh, so that is conservation bukannya kita totally demolish and then rebuild a new kudu jail there no um, adaptive reuse of heritage building is recommended and encouraged why this adaptive reuse ni adalah penggunaan semula it's like um, using the building uh, uh, sorry uh, 
uh, an old building to be used in a new way. Ha, tu dia. Like pasal, uh, like the central market before. Uh, central market, uh, pasal, pasal, pasal central market was not pasal seni before. Central market was pasal tengah, pasal utama, whatever lah. Uh. The central market was a wet market. That was the original usage of CM. Central market. Yang mana, if you go now, there's painters. Uh, there are, uh, uh, apa nama tu? Um, Uh, people who are with uh, handicraft punya skills kan uh, yang buat kerja-kerja seni tu all this um, uh, leather workers oh, bukan leather what do you call that what do you call leather what do you call that huh? craftsman lah uh, craftsman bukan huh? before tempat jual ikan ayam sayur uh, that was central market before uh, but like i said uh, when as time goes by the place was not suitable for a wet market uh, Um, people don't go there anymore. People went to supermarkets. People went to cleaner markets. Huh? So the place was uh, run down, huh? but it was constructed in the 18 uh, in the in the 19th century. So there was a historical value there, historical significance there. Huh? Ada juga uh, aesthetic uh, punya ataupun architectural punya significance in the building. Huh? So uh, the the the, the authorities at that time okay they took a, a good uh, decision they made a good decision uh, rather than demolishing the uh, central market what they did was they they, they turn the use uh, they changed the use into uh, arts into an arts punya market uh, yang mana sekarang ni you boleh beli all these um, craft tangan uh, you can buy paintings you can buy leather goods you can buy all kinds of arts punya products uh, and it's now a Uh, apa nama tu, uh, a very good tourist attraction. Huh? If, I, if I have any um, any apa nama tu, uh, friends from overseas, I take them there huh? so that they can appreciate the Malaysian punya arts. Huh? So adaptive reuse of heritage building huh? is recommended and encouraged. Why? Because they want to promote the intangible heritage tadi tu. Uh, they want to keep the building alive. Without people in the building, the building becomes dead. There's no meaning to the tangible heritage. Uh, so that's why adaptive reuse of adaptive, uh, heritage building is recommended. And more examples like in um, in Malacca, in Georgetown, uh, the pre-wash up houses, they turn into boutique hotels for instance. They turn into boutique restaurants, for instance, kan? Huh? Good place to hang out. Huh? Uh, just put in a Wi-Fi there, and then people come there huh? for their coffee, for their designer, whatever lah, designer cake, huh? things like that. Keep and strengthen the existing structure using original methods and materials whenever possible. It should be made safe. Uh, so safety is a main concern, but at the same time, uh, the existing structure must be kept, must be Uh, apa, apa tu, um, must be or must be kept in is a in a, in a good condition lah huh? tak rendah. Okay, that's all for today. Okay, I will come up with the second um, clip ah uh, as okay second clip second set of lectures on the Malaysian context on the National Heritage Act 2015 in the next set of lectures. Okay, thank you for listening. Bye bye.